What is it about crosswalk lights that people don't like? They got to stop. Yeah, the police can arrest these people, but it's like the scumbag that uh, allegedly killed uh, the lady we're talking about. He had a rap sheet a mile long. There was no reason why he should have been out. In fact, the city jail, and this is what really should upset everyone, the city jail refused to take him. That's why he was out on the street. He was hurt, though, and they, they well, really said that you need to go to Grady. Well, that's the oldest trick in the world. But anyhow, that's another story for another time. From my understanding of what you, I you know, read. You're, you're a kind person, but anyhow, he should have been, really should have been jailed, and he should have been given medical attention. I don't think he should have been out. I agree. Thank you. I, I, I didn't think you were that permissive, but anyhow... The point here is the judges. The point here is the judge. You got mandatory judges. Yes, they deal with misdemeanors, but they're releasing people with a no cash, no bail policy that the mayor and council instituted several years ago in Atlanta, and they they have felonies on these rap sheets, even though they're in for a misdemeanor. I think we ought to have the legislature. Well, the legislature, we ought to we ought to stop no cash, no bail. Is it time for the legislature to step in on this issue, Farron? Well, I think Bill made some good points, and then of course he politicized some of the points as well. But not dis but, 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 but not, but not, dis not disagreeing. I'm, I'm submitting today civility um but the, look it's a multi-prone approach you gotta you can't put all this burden on our police officers to arrest bad people when they get arrested and they go and they stay in trial or they're in jail they're let out and it's just a revolving door and so then you can't put all this you know responsibility on the mayor and the chief because everybody's got to do their job and so i don't I do think the legislature needs to have a conversation about it, uh, but I think we have to make sure that we're empowering our judges, our district attorneys, our police officers, and our leadership to do their jobs better before you start, you know, going to the state. But I agree with Bill. I think that the the judges have got to be held more accountable, and I would I would impose that if you're letting someone out that has a, a rap sheet of just consistent crimes, the public needs to know about it. I mean, and, and we need to we need to do a better job of informing people of what these judges judges are or are not doing so we can hold them accountable. All right. Mark Teichner is live in downtown Atlanta with the latest in, as a police search for that suspect. Mark. Yeah, at this point, uh, we don't know where things stand with the actual investigation. Have they made any arrests or do they even know who the suspects are? Uh, but we are hearing from one of the families, which, as you can imagine, is simply devastated by this shooting. Miss Justin's smile. We're gonna miss Justin's his hugs. Justin Powell's relative talks about the 16-year-old's death. Powell and his best friend, 14-year-old Malik Grover, were killed Saturday evening in a Southwest Atlantic gunfight. The relative, who asked not to be identified, says sadly this isn't the first time death has touched the family. This is the third child his mother is burying. The third child. How much more is a mother? a family expected to take. Investigators say two groups started shooting at each other at an apartment complex on Continental Colony Parkway. Two teens and an 11-year-old were also hurt. Detectives say it all started as a social media dispute. This should be a time that we are getting ready for the holidays, uh, but we have at least two families uh, that will be planning uh, for funerals. Paul's relative calls him bright with a loving family, but adds he fell in with the wrong crowd, despite efforts to get him help. I would like to see some type of programs for our children, not where someone is saying go throw a basketball. They need some life skills. They need some coping skills. She says it's time to have an honest conversation about gun violence before another family ends up in mourning. They do not fear guns and they don't fear death. We also talked with grandmother of Malik Grover. She says that their family, as you can imagine, is simply heartbroken and that they are just having trouble processing all that they're dealing with. Reporting live from downtown Atlanta, I'm Mark Teichner. For Good Day Atlanta, Ron, back to you. Academy, right before 3 in the afternoon, 15-year-old Brandon Perez and an unnamed 14-year-old boy were both shot in the head and taken to the hospital where they later died. Investigators say two more 15-year-olds, a girl and a boy, were also injured in the shooting but expected to survive. The high school was placed on lockdown following the shooting and so far no arrests have been made. Generations to come, then let's take action. Every few days we give our money to the big box stores. 
how we spend our dollars could be the most important vote. Do these stores promote freedom and American values? Is that where we should be buying our everyday household products for the rest of our lives? What if we just stop? What if we shop with a family-owned manufacturer who believes in preserving our freedoms? That's why SwitchToAmerica.com was created. SwitchToAmerica.com gives patriots the ability to walk away from the big box stores forever. Yeah, that's not scary at all. I do like how uh, Libs of TikTok put the Libs of TikTok handle right there where a mustache would be on a man who is can't probably grow one because... He likes to be a she. But anyway, speaking of those who can't help but push their agendas on little kids, this next redhead felt it necessary to go to war with a teacher who said she addresses her students as boys and girls? Wrong move, sister. Didn't you know those genders were literally made up? The woke patrol is on you, Nicole Mouth Breather. Here we have another veteran teacher who's insisting on the use of boys and girls in the classroom. Why is it so necessary to constantly remind kids of the gender binary with norms that we as a society literally made up? It's the same thing as saying, okay, talls and shorts, okay, blondes and brunettes. Not only does it divide the blondes from the brunettes, but it also leaves out the redheads. Statistically, redheads are pretty rare, but they exist biologically, socially, emotionally. Even if you don't like redheads or you've never met a redhead, dividing boys and girls constantly creates a disparity between the two and leaves out intersex children, non-binary children, and transgender children. I feel personally attacked with the talls and shorts comment on that one. Um, but if you're going to compare your hair color <coughs> to your gender, but then also not really know that there is a difference between boys and girls. You're kind of overlapping all of the things and getting everything confused. Clearly, we have another example of a soulless redhead. Well, since it appears we can't get away from these radical educators, let's feature another one who made it clear to her class that even a stuffed <laughs> penguin, yes, a penguin, cannot fall victim to gender stereotypes. Preach on, happy feet. I just had a really cute moment with my students and it was a great learning moment. If any of you teachers are using the program ST Math this year, you might know their mascot, Gigi. Students asked me, is Gigi a she or is it a he? And I said, I don't know. One of the students said, well, maybe they're non-binary. And I had a student say, well, let's just look between Gigi's legs. And I said, well, we don't know a person's gender by looking between their legs. And then my student was like, oh yeah, that's right. So we decided to call Gigi, they, them. It's moments like these that remind me why I got into teaching. These small moments can make such a big difference to kids' lives, and I'm honored that I get to have these moments with these awesome kids. And that's why we need schools to not exist in the current state they are, because this is the pride that these teachers are bringing to your children, where penguins have to have their genders and be told they're actually persons. So we have to look between penguins. Do they even really have the legs? I need to watch Happy Feet again to really understand it. But if you do that, according to that teacher, apparently you're some sort of a bigot. But Disney has really miscalculated their audience. This past summer, many of you remember the prequel to the billion dollar <laughs> Toy Story franchise entitled Lightyear opened in theaters and the film designed for children cost $200 million and featured a lesbian kiss. That's right, they woked it up again. Well, parents again let their dollars do the talking, and the movie grossed 118 million in the US, costing Disney 80 million dollars. In comparison, the non-woke, non-Disney film, Sing 2, cost 85 million to make, and it grossed 162 million in theaters during the pandemic. So, Katie, movies are some companies, not all, are pushing agendas. I think most of them are. But Disney is really geared toward children. This is the difference, what they're doing with animated movies now. And it should be called out. We've got to raise more awareness about this because some, some parents naively still think Disney movies bathe. No, that's absolutely true. And for the record, my... Well, then six-year-old nephew thought that Sing 2 was better than Sing 1. That's what I learned from that. I haven't seen either. So, 
that's left to be seen. But you are absolutely correct. So it's it's interesting. The whole Disney go woke, go broke it yeah. has proven to be true. And but they Dis don't care. They don't seem to care. They don't seem to care until they care just enough because they do care about that almighty dollar sign. And it got so bad here that they got rid of one Bob and brought back the old Bob. So they got a uh, Bob Chapek or Chapek or however you say oh, whatever his name is. CEO or yep. whatever. They yeah. just knocked him out to bring back Bob Iger to like you know, write the mouse house and make sure everything works again, because otherwise, yeah, parents hopefully are staying woke and that they're waking up to this nonsense and being like, we're not going to invest our money with, if this yeah. is what they're going to produce. It isn't, it isn't like the Pocahontas of yesteryear or Aladdin or basically any of the movies of old Disney yeah. have been deemed racist, sexist, bigoted. Somehow they actually put the, uh, warning signs and so yeah they are they are struggling and they should be so I'm glad at least maybe they're gonna try and fix it yeah even replacing the, the top guy oh we probably won't do it, it no it's because something. You, you've got to understand it's already in the system it's in their creators and animators and and storyboard artists and all that it's there they're already weaving that in so the top guy yeah he's gonna make a decision as far as the okay. agenda and the pro LGBTQ agenda we can't really expect that to go away just because they're replacing the top, the top guy. Yep. All right.